Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look at this board that's got a lot of hype going around it. Uh, when it was first announced, it caught my attention because of the price point and the features that it offers. Now this is the Keychron V1. This is a board that is available from Keychron that has uh, QMK support, south facing LEDs, or excuse me, sockets. And on top of that, it's $64 for the bare bones kit without the knob and comes pre-built for $84 without the knob. Now I opted for the, the bare bones kit here and I opted for the knob version because I love exploded 75% layouts with the knob. So today we're gonna take a look at this. We're gonna see what it comes packaged with and we're gonna do a, a simple build with it and see what kind of performance you can expect in that sub hundred dollar price range or close to a hundred dollar price range so uh let's go ahead and crack this open and then i've got some switches and keycaps set aside here that we will uh, put on it and see what kind of sound we can get out of it now this box is a little banged up not as nice of an experience as I had with uh, some of my other Keycom products. Some basic packaging foam here. Quick start guide that just kind of lays out, you know, what keycaps to use for the Mac layout. And then there's some additional information on the back here. Now that's kind of haphazard. All my stuff's kind of strewn about the box. Let's see here. Again, as I said with the Q0 build. <laughs> Thanks, Keychron. <laughs> but no, I'm, I mean, that's, that's good information. Make sure this, this pins are straight. You get a little uh, keycap puller here, which is quite strange considering that this is the... Uh, this is the bare bones and there are no keycaps on it all right we get a pretty decent get some light here, decent braided cable so that is kind of nice uh, not coiled so not as nice as the gas 67 but it's still braided and i think you know I'd rather have a straight cable like this than the one that was provided with the Q1 that is uh, coiled. Comes with a nice little, it's a USB-C to USB-C with a USB-C to USB-A adapter. And then we get a little hardware kit with some extras. So you get your screwdriver and then an Allen key. And then they give you some extra screws, which is kind of nice. And then lastly, you get one of these. I feel like this costs as much to produce as a decent, like if you were to take the cost of these two items together and then just, you know, <laughs> get a dual purpose one, I, th I think it would cost less to produce. So nothing real amazing in that department. But let's hope there's something amazing here. All right. And then we just get user manual with what you would expect. And you can always find that on the Keychron website. All right. Here we go. I'm expecting great things. It's the first time I'm seeing this. All right. Um... I'm not unimpressed. I'm not blown away. But I'm on a level with you. It's because I wanted the carbon black and they didn't seem to have the carbon black available at the time of purchase. I'm going to have to purchase the carbon black one and this might go to one of you fine folk. I've already got a small blemish here. Okay, never mind. It's not a blemish. It wiped off. So uh, I'm going to assume it's because of the lubricant on these stabilizers. So as per usual, 
these Keychron stabilizers come pump full of yummy loop goodness. And honestly, I found that the uh, the Keychron stabilizers are actually fairly decent once tuned. So honestly, like, I don't know. They're serviceable, if you will. I've seen some complaints about them, but I mean, they're totally serviceable. So we do get this nice little knob and it does come with the insert to kind of cover up that slot. I wonder if there is the ability to put an F13 under there. There's gotta be because I'm, I'm assuming it's, well, I was told in the Keychron Discord that it's not the same PCB. Cause I was going to get the pre-built carbon black and then just put a knob into it because I've got my own knobs and my own rotary encoders, but not too shabby. So let's break out our screwdriver kit and kind of dive into this a little bit. Now I'm not gonna take the, uh, the PCB and plate assembly apart, just purely based on time. I don't think it's necessary and we can kind of showcase that a little bit. Now I'm expecting these to be the same types of hex screws. The knob comes off fairly easily. It's your standard knob with the D insert. But uh, I'm expecting this to be very close to the Keychron Q, uh, the Q1 rather. There you go, that one fits. And that was, that was the two and a half hex bit. Now one thing I want to point out before I open it is that it does have these little riser feet on it, which is kind of cool. So it does have like the dual riser, which I do like coming on board. So this is very much reminiscent of the, the, the Fecker IK75. It has rubber feet if you want to use it flat, which is nice. And it does have the mode switcher, so you can switch between Windows and Mac and then your USB-C. And what I'm most excited to see here is what's inside the silicone. So let's go ahead and get started taking this apart. go kind of expected you know this is I feel like this is the insert that you get with any of the Keychron knobbed products uh, the nice thing that's included is you get these metal inserts which is kind of nice there we go so you get the metal inserts, which is not something that a lot of budget boards bring. And that's nice because it adds a, a level of protection so that way you're not screwing directly into the plastic. So that's pretty cool. All right. Now, I'm just realizing, for some reason I was thinking this was gasket mounted. This is not gasket mounted. This is a missed mark in my, my opinion because I don't think it would have cost too much more um, instead of screws providing gaskets and slightly more material for the plate. But uh, let's go ahead and grab another bit and take out all these plate screws so that way we can get into what's behind there. our last one that's a lot of screws and that's gonna be a lot of o-rings I hope I ordered enough o-rings <laughs> all right so board comes out just like that and here we have our massive giant silicon insert 
and it's pretty nice. Let's pull it out and see what we got in terms of thickness. I mean, it's it's fairly thick. It's gonna add a nice little level of dampening. I don't know that this would be my preferred method, but this would make it out of the box, no modding. I think it would be very nice to have. And that's what we're gonna build it with today. Um, I'd like to do some modding during this session, but I think as always, that will have to be a follow-up video. So let's go ahead and put that back in. And I'm thinking, I think that I'm finding that uh, with polycarbonate and ABS boards, my preferred sub profile is a single sheet of EVA foam and then PE foam mod on the PCB. So we've got no daughter board. So it is an attached USB, which is irrelevant to anything really because there's no, not going to be any kind of flex in this being tray mounted unless you did some sort of modification. And let me take a look here. I don't even think that we could friction fit this because it sits so loosely. Yeah, there's no way to friction fit this into this case. So gummy o-ring is not going to be an option. Um, I think, let me take a look here. I feel like we could stack mount it. So we could cut out those standoffs and then we could use uh, stacked layers of foam because just with that silicone dampener, I think if we just remove those standoffs entirely, I might even do that now because there, there's no point in the tray mount. It's not loose, so it almost doesn't need to exist. It could just be a sandwich mount in a way. But anyway, if we take a look here, some light on this. You will see that the sockets are all south facing, which is really nice. That's huge for somebody who's just getting into the hobby. And I think that's who this is for. This is for the person that just wants a nice board with a good feature set out the gate, decent stabilizers that can be tuned. So if somebody wants to learn to take baby steps into the hobby, they can tune their own stabilizers. It does come with, you can probably see it down in there. It comes with what feels like an EVA foam sheet uh, plate dampener that's pre-cut. This does have QMK support. So you do have that functionality, which is pretty cool. So do we or don't we even want to put the screws back in it? I am tempted. I mean, clearly want to put the screws back in because I don't think it's going to sandwich. Let's put this back on. Hmm. That's a tough call. Let me get some O-rings and we'll see if we've got enough to do the O-ring mount. All right. This is a pack of... 30 o-rings they are one and a half millimeter diameter on the inside and then four on the outside and you can get these from amazon it's not the most cost effective way of doing it ordering in bulk from somewhere like mouser or something like that is going to be your best route but we're gonna burger mount this and that's a lot to be burger mounting but we're gonna do it anyway so let's go ahead and get started inserting our O-rings onto our screws and our screws through and then the second O-ring on that. All right, so I'm hoping that these are long enough. I'm actually leaving out these three here so that way these can kind of float on the outside, hopefully. Let's get this back inside here. You want to make sure that your dip switch is aligned here and this should slide right into the hole of the 
external switch. So you want to screw these down to where they are just snug. You don't want to be tight, otherwise you are making that mounting mod kind of pointless. So you just want to snug it up, otherwise those O-rings will end up walking over top of the screw heads. So we got those where we want them. Let's get the top back on. Now again, the preferred flavor would be a PE foam sheet. They don't have any integrated one like the gas uh, 67 does. So, uh, but we are gonna forego that just to see how it sounds kind of in this inexpensive, you know, low, you know, no barrier to entry, if you will, uh, configuration. So let's get this screwed back together. And there we go. And while I pick this up, if you guys are liking what you're seeing so far, or you've watched other videos on the channel and you like what I do, please go and hit that subscribe button and share these videos with your, your Discord communities and your friend groups. And uh, you know, I'd love to have more people come and hang out with me. So, and those of you who've been here watching these videos while I build, thank you for building with me. You guys are awesome and I really appreciate the support. So now that we've got that taken care of, let's take a look at what we're gonna throw on this today. Now this is something I kind of wanted to go with, something that was accessible. I wanted to go with something that was inexpensive. I could have gone a slightly different route, but I chose Gateron Milky Yellows. Now I got these for 17 cents a piece on a sale from Typer, and they are unlubed, but you can get the pre-lubed uh, Gateron Pro Milky Yellows, same housings, the full housings, the full milky housings, for about $23. So it's still very reasonable uh, to kit this board in about less than $25 worth of switches. So let's see here. So I'm noticing some fitment issues. There's little holes, huh? That is strange. So by not screwing the plate down tight, you'll see here, I'm just gonna leave it because I feel like this is indicative of the mod, but there's a small gap here where these little pegs are not going into the holes on the plate all the way. And I feel like I might, in the future, I'm gonna redo this, I'm gonna leave this for now. In the future, I would probably omit anything that is touching this bar here. Uh, and just, so there's a screw here. The screw here seems to be okay. but the screw here is also causing an issue. So maybe this is not the best way to go about it. We're gonna revisit this without a burger mount and I'm gonna stack mount this, stack sandwich, however you wanna call it and uh, see what that does for it. But let's go ahead and put these switches on and then I'll show you what keycaps are working with. All right, there we go. So that was fairly easy. Uh, you know, with any switches that come in a bag, you're always gonna have that issue with bent pins, but other than that, it went in fairly easily. I think it looks good. And 
totally affordable setup and you really can't go wrong with Milky's but I might be a little bit biased because this is my favorite switch and if you didn't know I actually made a new switch that is based off of Milky's and uh, ink so be sure to check out that cream soda video that I made all right so these keycaps that we're gonna throw on here these are basically a black on black that you can get from uh, KP Republic they call it the uh, thick PBT plastic black yellow gentleman and it comes in different variations this particular one I think is a 64 key which does include all the keys that you'll or switches that excuse me all the keycaps that you'll need for a board like this and if you check the description I actually have five dollars off twenty dollars or more so it's forty dollars and ninety cents and then you can get five bucks off of that and again makes for makes for a nice budget build so the nice thing about these is these are cherry profile and we can use these on here because the switches are south facing and uh, they'll work without any kind of interference. So let's go ahead and get these uh, switches on here and, or these keycaps on here and then we'll come back and we'll do a sound test. All right, so I'm realizing now that uh, this is not the 64 kit, this is the TKL kit, uh, but the gist of it should still be the same. So for the time being, um, I'm going to run without some keys here, because I don't think I've got enough to cover it. But uh, we'll still get a typing test out of it, but uh, I think I'm going to have to get a different keycap set for it because we do not have <laughs> the appropriate right shift or these little guys down here at the bottom. All right, but you guys get the general idea and when we're typing on the alphas, uh, I, I think it'll be fine. It's a little scuffed, but I think it will be fine. And uh, there's definitely a lot of modding that needs to happen here. So let's go ahead and jump over to a sound test. All right, so thoughts on that sound test. We're in the uh, the upper clack territory here for sure. But I mean, let's keep in mind, we've got a $64 board here if you get it without the knob. You got about $24 in switches, so that's 84 bucks. Throw on the keycaps for about 35 bucks and you're coming in at about $110 for a 75% south facing QMK build. And this has had no mods to it. We can make this sound certainly sound a lot better with a PE foam mob and maybe removing that silicon dampener out of there. So um, I think this would sound a lot better if we did the PE foam and then instead of silicone on the bottom, we did neoprene or, or uh, excuse me, poron. And I think we're going to do that in the future. We're gonna revisit that. Keep in mind, the builds that we do on this are, I'm here with you. It's the first time I'm doing it. It's just kind of, you know, a spitballing, throwing things together, and then just kind of see what the outcome is. So sometimes we don't get great sounding boards, but other times we have some that are extremely surprising, like the JJK84. So anyway, uh, for the val the value for this board, I mean, 
honestly, for 64 bucks, um, you really can't beat it. Now keep in mind, there is some extra shipping that's associated with it. So when we say 64 bucks, that's kind of like your base price point. Um, they're actually becoming available on Amazon. And I think you can get the non knob version for $74 with prime shipping. So it's not too far off. It's in that same ballpark. Uh, you know, and a lot of times people, when they're pricing out boards, I won't say a lot of times, but sometimes they don't include the shipping and things like that. So anyway, you can still come in at under $150 for a well-known brand and a pretty solid this is a pretty nice solid feeling board i think this is going to be my recommend going forward over the um the uh the ik75 just because i don't know the unboxing experience wasn't as nice the knobs not as nice but the build quality and the feature sets that it, the feature set that it has is pretty close to the ik75 it's just missing the wireless functionality but yeah i mean i think it's okay I think these are the wrong keycaps. Clearly the wrong keycaps, <laughs> super scuffed. But what I mean is like, I think if you put a little bit better quality keycap on it, or maybe you got something like uh, an XDA profile, if you can use flat, flat profiles, I think that would give a better sound. Uh, I was able to build the K8 out pretty good with, uh, with uh, Kale, just Kale Pro switches and uh, XDA keycaps and it sounded really nice and deep sounding. So I'm going to revisit this board. Uh, do I think it's this like budget king that everybody's hollering about? Absolutely, absolutely. And when it's coming in at the price of a next time 75 polycarb uh, bare bones, it's the same price. If you can get it on Amazon, you know, you're paying a couple bucks more. If you had to pay for the shipping, that kind of sucks. But if you're gonna buy something else from Keychron anyway, but either way, this is extremely compelling. This is much better than what you would get with an X-Time 75. This is much better than what you would get uh, with the uh, with the Fecker. Uh, this is NTH-80 territory. And if you had to say, you know, one or the other, if you're buying a bare bones, I mean, the TH-80 is already kind of there but also software wise kind of not. So the QMK support kind of pushes this over the edge. So you got to kind of to weigh them. I know I said that the uh, TH-80 wasn't my favorite board, but uh, you know, there's no denying the value in it with the south facing uh, sockets, you know, the build quality similar to this, uh, the nice knob that you get on it, especially if you buy the pre-built unit, it, it's, it's pretty compelling. But this pre-built, if you don't mind the K series switches and you're not after the G Pro, I mean, that's where the value comes in. I mean, there, as you might have seen in other videos, I would encourage you to check out some of those other videos, by the way. But we're talking, we're talking 20 bucks for switches and keycaps. And you probably get something that sounds similar to this. Now, but once we get PE foam on this, this is gonna be, it's gonna be, if you will. But anyway, I hope you guys had fun today. Uh, this was a quick look. We're definitely gonna revisit this. I think this has a lot more potential than we've put into it today. I just kind of scrounged for some keycaps. But if you like these keycaps, again, KP Republic. Uh, they also have a lot more. Dami Key is crazy on there. And uh, again, any purchase over 20 bucks, if you use the code PUNCTURE, you get five bucks off. So pretty good value there. But again, thanks everyone for hanging out. A lot of fun taking a look at this board. A lot of fun uh, goofing, not realizing I had the wrong keycap set. But uh, next time we revisit it, we'll remedy that. But until next time, y'all have a good one.